So Shanna, you work for the Canadian Council for International Cooperation. I'm Mike with the British Columbia Council for International Cooperation. And we just coordinated on some research. I'm wondering if you could just give us a, the, the viewers a brief idea of who the CCIC is. And who you are, by the way, who you would you? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, so the Canadian Council for International Cooperation is a coalition of civil society organizations that champion and contribute to sustainable development around the world. And I'm the Director of Research Policy and Practice. So tell me about this research. What, what was the research about? So the research is really looking at the role of coalitions um, that are dedicated to supporting the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and really trying to identify what are the good practices that we see emerging from around the world in terms of how these coalitions function and contribute to um, our shared goals of uh, prosperity, uh, a sustainable planet, and leaving no one behind. Yeah, why, why is it important? So it's important for a number of reasons. Um, one is really around the recognition that we have that the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is only going to be achieved if we're all working together. Um, the, what is often referred to as the whole of society approach. And so these coalitions tend to be, sometimes include civil society organizations, sometimes they include the private sector, academia, government, they come in all shapes and sizes, um, but this is one of the key sort of spaces that the non-governmental actors and sometimes with government can come together and identify what their shared ambitions are, um, their particular, particular policy agendas they want to pursue, and opportunities to collaborate together to realize the sustainable development goals. Um, and, and in that sense, this research is really trying to help inform how these coalitions function so that they can really put their best foot forward to be inclusive, to be equitable, um, to, to really ensure the voices of those that are being left behind are heard, um, and essentially contribute to our overall uh, goals related to sustainable development. Or is this report targeted at you know, some specific people? Who should read this report? In my view, who should be reading this report is civil society organizations, of course, the coalitions themselves. So those that are responsible for secretariats of coalitions, those that are the leaders in these types of coalitions and governments. Because I think it's really important for, the, for government stakeholders to see and understand the types of good practices that are being adopted both with and without government stakeholders to inform how they think about how they engage with us citizens, other civil society organizations, private sector stakeholders, and so on, in terms of 2030 agenda implementation. For that specific audience, and they'll know if they're watching this video, right? Uh, the report's not too long, but give us just a few tidbits. What would be a jewel in the report that maybe, you know, makes it, you know, would, would make it more interesting for somebody to say, okay, I'm going to sit down and read this thing. So I think a couple of the tidbits are actually how it's, how the report itself has been structured. Um, so it is based on desk review, it's based on, you know, interviews that we've done, um, based on conversations with coalitions from around the world. And so one of the things that it does offer is very diverse perspectives and ways of thinking about how these coalitions can effectively function. Um, and particularly looking around um, sort of governance, membership, um, the kind of practical ins and outs. So in a way, there's almost a how-to aspect to this report and kind of providing guidance on different aspects of how a coalition can function, and how this good engagement can occur um, that's helpful for the readers. The other piece that we've done is we've very, very strategically pulled out those good practices in boxes throughout. So we've tried to make this report as user-friendly as possible. Very, you know, our key messages are our front and center, you know, limited set of recommendations. And then throughout the report, if you're interested in governance, you can go to that section and you can very quickly see, oh, here's the 10 good practices I could adopt in my organization. So very much, um, you know, presented in a way that we hope is actionable and useful for the readers.